Oh my goodness. Hello guys. What the fuck is up? It has been a very long time. I don't remember when I posted the last episode, but I know it was probably before August. No, it was the day before my birthday. Oh my god, wow. <laughs> wow. I'm laughing because I'm going to explain like why I took a break from everything. I feel like a lot of people probably already know if you follow me on Instagram or watch my YouTube videos. I feel like the podcast is for like the people who know about stuff, so you guys probably already know. But basically, I'm laughing because I posted the podcast, then the next day was my birthday, and then the next day is when I went to the hospital. So, it all kind of is full circle right now cuz I feel happier and now I'm back. I'm back to the pod. <laughs> Basically, I really just was not feeling very slay, and then I took a lot of time to myself and decided that I need to feel slay again, and now I feel slay again. So I'm going to explain what I did and my whole journey. But before I get into all of that, I have a couple announcements to make. First thing is that I am back to making YouTube videos. I actually posted three in the month of October. Well, I guess two of them were like a two-part vlog. So if you want to count that as one, go ahead, whatever. But I posted three YouTube videos in October. And that is like more YouTube videos than I have made in the past, I don't know, six months. <laughs> but yeah, back on there. My second announcement is that I just came out with merch. Maybe you saw it. I came out with a merch collection with a small business called Self Fixated. We came out with a 10-piece collab collection, so you guys can shop that. The link is like everywhere in all of my bios or you can check out selffixated.com. And besides that, I guess, you know, my Instagram is still popping. I'm still posting on there, posting daily, posting a lot. Am I posting too much? I don't know. Let me know. Sometimes I worry that I'm posting too much and that I'm annoying people. But maybe I should stop thinking like that because you guys follow me for a reason. <laughs> but all right, let's get into strain of the day. Honestly, I feel like if you guys have been keeping up with my kind of like strain journey on the podcast you know that i was avoiding sativas because my anxiety was really really bad guess what much in line with the topic of this video you know like feeling more slay and getting my mental health in a better place guess what i smoked the sativa today and i have been experimenting with sativas i started off with like a sativa based hybrid and then i slowly was like okay i'm fine this is cool i like the energy and right now i'm smoking a pure sativa let's go ladies <laughs> but specifically i'm smoking on some euphoria by sluggers this says hmm i'm reading it it is a cross between Cheetah Piss and Project 4516. I don't really know what that is, but I have been smoking this when I want to be productive. So I was like, you know what? The podcast is a productive type of thing. Let me smoke on some euphoria. So here I am and I'm feeling great. And I also have a chai iced latte. You hear that? But I have to say, it tastes a little bit off. I don't know what about it tastes off, but when I first took a sip this morning, I literally was like, oh, that tasted like Sprite, like the soda. So that was odd, very odd. Um, but I'm drinking the chai latte anyways, against my better judgment. <laughs> but yeah, where do I even begin? Hmm. I guess like it's easiest for me to view my life in seasons, especially because I live in a place that we have all four seasons, which I love. So I'm going to go back to like springtime of this year. Basically springtime, you know, I was already kind of in a bad mental space and my depression was kind of creeping up on me. But I think I was like trying. I think I was like attempting to socialize and I was really focused on work and work was going really well. And I just was like, kind of satisfied with where I was in life or I knew that I was like on my path to doing better you know but I got like really lonely I'm not gonna lie I started getting so lonely that I was like nah I need a relationship to fix this like 
there's like this weird hole in me that's not getting filled. Let me go search for somebody to fill it. So I did that. And honestly, I really didn't share a lot of my relationship publicly because I just don't really like doing that anymore. I used to do it when I was younger, but it is not for me anymore. But when I'm like in a really happy relationship, best believe I'm going to be posting it on feed. (laughs) Just nobody has made me that happy yet, I guess. But anyways, some people picked up that I had a boyfriend and then they started asking like, wait, what happened? Why did you guys break up? What even happened? Who even was he? Blah, blah, blah. So what I'm here to say is I have always been this way where I really do not like to talk about people publicly because they're real people. Like I still had time with them and no matter what, I will never like disrespect somebody publicly. Um, But I will say like, We both were in a very bad mental health space in the beginning. And then I think us being together and then like us only hanging out with each other basically was really bad. Like I think it just made our mental health so much worse. And honestly, at the time where my mental health was the worst, 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 he broke up with me. So we're just going to move past this. (laughs) I don't want to say he's a bad person. I don't want to say it was a bad relationship. And honestly, I feel like at the time, like, he was my best friend and maybe, like, the only person I was talking to. And I think that that was, like, kind of driving me crazy. (laughs) I feel like we both put a lot of pressure on each other to make each other happy. Or at least, like, I know that I was looking towards him to make me happy and I know that I was doing everything I could to make him happy and I think that I was just exhausted at the end I was exhausted he was exhausted it just was like not a good thing like I don't think that we both were in the position to better ourselves while with each other I know that in the springtime I was slipping very closely to the line of depression but in the summer when I was with him a lot and dating him, I was like depressed. Like I was so depressed. I couldn't even work. I couldn't even do anything. Like my mental health was so bad and I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming it on the fact that I wasn't taking care of myself and I was more so like focused on making him happy and I felt like I couldn't make him happy. So I think I just really lost myself and I think that I was putting so much energy into the relationship that I should have been putting into friendships and family and work and myself and self-care like I just was putting all of my energy into this thing that was bad and toxic and just nobody we couldn't make each other happy at the end of the day he couldn't make me happy and I couldn't make him happy and we just kept trying and trying and trying and it just wasn't working and honestly I got to such a place of like isolation and bad mental health that on my birthday I was like fuck I'm literally 25 today and I can't do this like I literally just can't and I basically did nothing for my birthday like I did have a lunch with my grandma and my ex-boyfriend at the cheesecake factory which was cute I mean it was it was nice but Honestly, like I normally throw a party, I normally do something fun, and I really didn't. And I felt so sad. Like I didn't even care for my birthday. I am a person who loves my birthday. I'm a Leo. So the next day, like I literally just had a breakdown. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I was like begging my ex to take me to the hospital because I was like, I just can't do this anymore. And I'm sorry, I'm going to put a trigger warning on this video in the title because I feel like this is all a very sensitive topic, but I'm just trying to be like honest about what happened and be vulnerable. So basically, I begged him to take me to the hospital and then we went there. I was there for a very long time. And another thing that I need to mention is that I feel like being in a relationship in general is very triggering to me because of the trauma that I went through in the past. So I literally went on new meds. I started taking um, antidepressants because I kept having panic attacks because I was in a relationship. So I was on new meds because I was getting triggered when in reality, like... 
at that point, if something is triggering you to the point where you need medication, okay, maybe you need to like remove yourself from that situation. And I learned that. And now I don't think I'll ever like let another person get me to that place of panic anymore. But whatever, it happened. I was on new meds and guess what? The meds were not reacting well with me at all. So when I went to the hospital, they literally took me off of the meds, cold turkey. And I had to go through like the withdrawals process of that, which is not fun, guys. Like you're literally going through withdrawals. You feel I don't want to say like I felt crazy, but like I literally felt crazy, guys. (laughs) So, yeah, I ended up in the hospital. We did a whole eval on me, like a psych eval and physical evaluation, everything. They took all of my tests. They took my blood. They did an EKG, whatever. Um, I talked with so many people and honestly, they let me go home they were they kept me there for so long under watch like I literally was under surveillance but yeah they told me I was good to go and that I need to stop taking the meds and they gave me resources to connect me with like programs if I wanted to join it they actually you know asked me if I wanted to admit myself which I didn't want to because of work which I feel like is such a stupid thing honestly it was work and then mostly my cat like I just didn't want to leave my cat here while I'm away and I felt like my ex could watch my cat I just didn't think we were at a good place where I could ask him that but yeah I decided to join an outpatient program instead so I joined this program I don't know if I should say the name a lot of people ask me for the name maybe I'll just say it because it could be helpful but it might just be a New York thing it's called Willow Behavioral Health And I got referred to them from the hospital specifically. They told me that this program was good for like people my age. So I really wanted to try it out. And yeah, I was experiencing a lot of feelings during all of this time. Like I was having the withdrawals from the antidepressants. And then also, obviously, I was still having anxiety and depression because those things don't just go away like immediately, you know? So I was going through a lot and I started the program. I started like really trying to better myself, but my anxiety and my separation anxiety was really bad. And uh, yeah, me and my boyfriend broke up. I think that it's a sad story and I think that it sucks what happened, but I think that if he was going to stay with me and keep acting how he acted, I was never going to feel better. Like, I was never going to feel better being in that relationship. I won't talk about, like, what went on or whatever, but we had different ideas of what a relationship should be. And I don't think that I need to settle for something that I don't agree with. You know, like, I don't think that I need to settle. I think that I am a person of, like, high value and I see myself as valuable. But at the time, I did not see myself as valuable. So I took this like it was all my fault and that like I did this and that I'm too much and that I'm crazy kind of like I kind of felt like what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, am I crazy that I can't even like keep a boyfriend? But in reality, you know, like I really just was going through a lot and my actions were really only responses to what was going on in the relationship. So I feel like it's best that we broke up. Honestly, I think the best thing he did was break up with me because it allowed me to like realize that I can find my own happiness because I went into the relationship like thinking I had like this hole that needed to be mended. So then I kind of realized, okay, I can mend it myself. And I think that if I stayed with him, I would have kept looking to him to fill that hole in my heart when I really needed to fill it by myself. So yeah. (laughs) (laughs) you know at the time I didn't get it like I really felt like everything was my fault but also like looking back at it now like I see a lot of things that we both did wrong and then I see a lot of things that he did wrong that I didn't even notice that I didn't even notice so now I'm kind of like ew (laughs) now I kind of have the ick like I I genuinely have a little ick towards him but whatever I digress it's done. I'm single, single Pringle, ready to mingle. (laughs) Actually, I don't even know 
But okay, back to the program and me, okay? Now the rest of this is going to be about me. I'm not going to talk about relationships or boys or drama. It's going to be about me. (laughs) So I joined the Willow program. And basically what that consists of is you get a psychiatrist, you get a psychologist, you get a peer sponsor. And then I think they had group sessions available. I did not join them, unfortunately, because I was shy and anxious. (laughs) But I feel like I had a really great team. I loved my therapist. I saw her. It was either once or twice a week, but she mainly booked me twice a week to make sure I was good and on track. Then I had my peer sponsor. And then I had my psychiatrist, which is the person who, you know, like deals with the meds for you. And honestly, after I had that horrible experience, I was like, no, I don't want to be on any meds just for transparency. I smoke weed every single day. And he was like, if that works for you, fine. And honestly, I really wanted to mention this in the pod while I was talking about this. I was really honest with my weed usage with all of the doctors, even in the hospital, because honestly, my health is most important to me. And if weed is affecting my health, they need to know. Like, I want them to know everything about me so that they can correctly figure it out. So, yeah, it it only went well for me, to be honest. Like, literally nobody cared that I smoked weed. Literally nobody gave a fuck. And they said, you know what, if that works for you and you don't want to take meds, that's fine. And I was like really like I felt validated. I don't know. I never felt validated like that in a professional setting when it came to weed. So yeah, I just wanted to be clear with you guys and everybody. I was honest with everyone because I don't play with my health. (laughs) Why would I lie? That's the thing. I don't get when people lie to their therapists or like lie to doctors. Why would you lie? Because you need to tell them the truth so they can correctly help you. They can help you to their best ability. They can only help you based on what you say. So yeah, I'm always honest. So yeah, I was doing like two therapy sessions a week, one peer sponsor a week, and then I wasn't meeting with the psychiatrist because I wasn't on meds. So this program is typically six to eight weeks, but they actually let me out a little early, which I was like, okay, slay. Did I just like win the therapy program? (laughs) Did I just like beat the final boss? But whatever. They let me out in five weeks. So I did all of that. I feel like it was very nice to have a support system and to like dedicate my life to my mental health because in addition to being in the program I definitely was focused on my real life routines like I started forcing myself to go on walks in the mornings and I fucking hated it at first like I had so much anxiety to walk around around here I live in Brooklyn I live in a very populated area with a lot of people, a lot of different types of people. But I was like, fuck it. I cannot feel uncomfortable in the place that I live. I need to just start going for walks and start just getting used to it, like getting just used to everything. And it's crazy because I'm literally from New York. I've been around this many people my whole life. But I think after the pandemic, like a lot of things changed. Like it's so crazy because... Before, like, I remember in high school, I literally took the train every single day to school and back. And I had a commute that was maybe an hour and a half to school. I was going super far because I was in an art school and I really wanted to go there. But I was traveling, basically walking, then taking a bus, then taking a train and then transferring to another train. Like, that's how far I was traveling for school. And I never cared. I was always around a million people, around a million crazy things. You know how New York is. Like, I literally never cared. And after the pandemic of, like, not really going out and not really doing stuff for, like, I don't know, a year or two, I got so anxious about going outside. Like, to be honest, even now, like, ever since I got a car, I barely take the train. I only take the train if I'm going, like, with friends, like, in a group. And I see it as, like, a little adventure, which is probably annoying to people, but whatever. I've been taking the train since I'm a little kid. I think that I'm allowed now to be like, I do not want to take the train. But yeah, it's crazy. I used to be so much more like fearless when I was younger, but as I got older and started seeing like the horrors of the world, (laughs) I don't know, like 
you start just realizing things are like crazier than they are. I don't know why, like as a kid, you don't feel like that things are dangerous, but I don't know. I just started like getting very like isolated after the pandemic because I wasn't really doing stuff. I kind of got scared of the trains. Like I didn't want to take public transportation. My ex at the time didn't want to drive me places or pick me up, which I feel like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was an asshole move. If you're a guy with a car and you don't go pick up your girlfriend from girls night out, like trash, you're trash. <laughs> So yeah, whatever. I was super comfortable like driving places and going wherever I needed to go, but I really didn't walk around much or take public transport. Like I really just wasn't outside too much. So I was like, I need to start going on walks. So I started doing that. And now to be honest, like I'm really fine going on walks. I feel comfortable. I don't feel nervous. I don't feel anxious. I mean, I'm still cautious because I'm not going to say like I live in the safest place in the world, but I'm definitely like not scared and anxious anymore which I think is a really good thing and I think that that's like shows my progress but yeah besides the walks other things in my daily routine that I needed to change were like learning how to set boundaries learning when I'm overstimulated and when I need to calm the fuck down learning what I want to tolerate and what I don't setting boundaries within myself and also like creating like a morning routine a night routine a cleaning routine like just ways to make my life a little bit easier even with food you know I have a lot of food sensitivities because I have a chronic illness in my stomach so I often got really anxious about deciding what to eat because a lot of foods do not cooperate well with me at all so I basically have a mental list of everything that I can eat and everything that I can't eat and while I'm still anxious about food at times It makes it a lot easier for me to decide on what I should eat because I would rather feel nice and good and happy than trigger my chronic illness. (laughs) You basically want to create a toolbox to help you get through life. Like I just wanted to make my life easier. I have a to-do list every day. I have a calendar. I have a monthly calendar. I have a monthly goal thing. I do my finances every month. I really try my best to make my life organized because if my life wasn't organized, I would be so much more stressed than I already am. (laughs) Another thing that I had to realize is like you kind of are like the people that you surround yourself with and being around people that like suck the life out of you is not good. Like it is so, so bad to be around people that you feel drained by. So now I take my personal space and my socialization very seriously. (laughs) Like, I just want to protect myself because I don't know. I'm scared at this point. I feel like I have finally created this like nice little Emily the Fairy bubble that I'm in. And I just feel very happy in here, very content, doing my own thing, living my little cute life. And I get scared to bring people in. I definitely do. I'm still working on that. My trust issues. I am still working on my trust issues. (laughs) But I feel like I'm so much happier now. Um, Okay, so let me think. When was, how long ago was my birthday? I think it's been over two months now. So two months like in recovery mode, I guess I'll put it as. And I genuinely love myself so much more than I did two months ago. I look back at it and I can't even believe I disliked myself so much like I can't believe I felt so horrible about myself and I can't believe I let myself get to a place where my actions weren't even like me like I felt like I just didn't recognize myself but I mean I did what I had to do to become the person that I wanted to be I'm still not there. Like, I feel like I'm always ever changing and ever growing. And I feel like that's just life in general. You should never feel satisfied with where you're at. I feel like, well, no, you should feel satisfied, but you shouldn't get comfortable because then you need to just keep expanding. Like, I want to keep growing and keep expanding as a person. And also like my life experiences, I want to keep expanding on those So we are ever changing and ever growing. You know what I mean? (laughs) But I mentioned it before. 
I kind of just feel like I really value myself as a person and I see that my time is valuable and that I'm cool. <laughs> I don't know. Like I like myself and I like my job and I like my life and I'm happy with it. And I feel like I also had to like change my goals. I recently have been thinking about goals and I think I was like very focused on I want a family and I want a partner to do things with like I wanted to buy a house with somebody you know or I wanted to get married or like stuff like that but I recently realized I have a new goal <laughs> my goal is to buy a house by myself which sounds crazy especially in this economy and especially because I live in New York Will I move out of New York? I don't know. Half of my family is in Long Island. Half of my family is in Florida. Of course, I have like people scattered everywhere, family members all over the country and stuff, but, and in New York, different areas, but my immediate family are in Long Island and Florida. So I'd probably move to one of those. And honestly, I'd probably choose Long Island. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, I realized I have a new goal and I can do it by myself. I always thought I couldn't. I think like I had a lot of, uh, I don't know, dependence issues. Like I felt like I needed another person to do things or I felt like I couldn't do it alone. But I think that's just because I didn't see that growing up. Like I just never saw somebody do it like close to me. So I didn't think it was possible. But now I'm like, oh my goodness, like I should just like make this my goal so that I just have motivation to work really hard. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. But, you know, I think I didn't have a plan for so long because I really wasn't thinking so far into the future because I was so focused on getting through every day. Like every day was hard. Like when you're depressed, every day is so hard. It's insane. Like even waking up, getting up, taking a shower, making breakfast like that could be a whole a whole panic attack right there <laughs> like that literally could be a panic attack for me but I think that I'm just so much more like relaxed right now and it's not that I don't get anxious it's that I'm able to identify when I'm anxious and then I'm able to like calm myself down or like figure out how I'm gonna maneuver my life to make it easier for me I think that Depression and anxiety is something that I just struggle with and I've always struggled with it from childhood and it's very deeply ingrained, a lot of genetics involved as well and it's just something that I have to uh, just live with I guess. Same with my chronic illness, like I took that very hard because I recently went to a specialist and honestly I did not like what they told me. They basically just said, you have a chronic illness and you just have to live your life like that. Haha, -ha, that's it. Okay, bye. <laughs> that's basically what they told me. So I took that very hard. I was crying because I was like, oh my God, I can't eat like a normal person. Like I can't eat anything. The list of things I can't eat is so long. It's insane. But I'm finally figuring it out and I finally gained some weight and I'm happy. I'm very happy. But yeah, these are things that I just have to live with. You know, I have to live with it and I have to somehow create a life that makes it easier for me to live with these problems. And that is the key for me, at least, because when I do that, I'm just I just feel better. Like, I feel so good that when I have to go do something that's out of my comfort zone, I'm in a much more regulated state that I'm not as stressed like I don't know I've been able to socialize I've been able to go out with friends I've been able to just walk around go to the store go to the supermarket well I haven't went to the supermarket yet because I always order my groceries because I'm fucking lazy <laughs> I'm lazy I'm lazy but but I have went to the mall <laughs> I feel like my social anxiety and my anxiety in general and also my depression have just gotten a lot better like everything has just gotten better and I want to say I'm very very grateful that I have the job that I have and that I can work from home because if I didn't have this job and I wasn't able to work from home like I do I honestly would not have been able to dedicate like a month and a half to my mental health I really would not have been able to do that 
I was only able to do that because I had money saved and I didn't have to clock in somewhere, you know, like I just was like, okay, I just don't have to work. It's fine. I'm just going to take a break. But if I had a real job that I had to go somewhere, well, let me stop saying real job versus me having a fake job because I want to say I have a real job too. But if I had a job where I had to clock in, I wouldn't be able to just say, oh, um, yeah, I need to take a month off, by the way. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that. (laughs) So yeah, I'm very grateful. And I also realized during this time that I've been working really hard for like the past 10 years. And the fact that I was able to take a break finally to focus on my mental health was because I worked so hard (laughs) for the past 10 years to build what I built and to make the kind of career that I have, I guess. And... I'm just, I don't know. I guess I I became proud of myself. I honestly felt very weird about my whole career path and like what I've done in life and how I was like a YouTuber as a teenager (laughs) and like all of this stuff. But, you know, I think I felt shame about it. I felt like I failed or that I had like a peak or whatever. But honestly... I'm fucking good. I'm good. I'm proud of myself. I've been working really hard for a long time. I did not peak as a teen. I'm still good. I'm good. I'm doing a lot right now. I'm successful and I'm satisfied. So I don't know, just building this self-confidence, self-esteem and knowing my worth changed everything for me. Also, I'm not going to lie, figuring out the food stuff changed a lot for me. Um... I will say like going out to eat and stuff like that still causes me anxiety or like going out causes me anxiety because I don't know if I eat something random, it might trigger my food sensitivities. And also guess what? Anxiety triggers my chronic illness and um, my chronic illness triggers my anxiety. So it's a circle. It's literally a circle. If I go out and the vibes are bad, and I feel like it's dangerous, and it's unsafe, or I feel like I don't know how I'm gonna get home, or there's a creepy vibe, or there's a creepy dude over there, I can start getting anxious, and then it starts triggering my GERD, which makes me feel like shit, and makes me feel like throwing up. So, um, yeah, I just like to avoid that. (laughs) Figuring out what I'm comfortable doing was really important to me as well like I realized I kind of like going out for like cute daytime activities rather than nighttime ones I don't know like I like going out at night but I hate being like outside and traveling at night because there's weirdos out okay (laughs) especially if I'm dressed for the club and then I'm out at like 3 a.m on the train are you kidding me absolutely not absolutely not and I don't know I just like to live my life on the safe side (laughs) like I don't know I like to be calm I like to be chill I like to go see the animals I like to go eat the fruits (laughs) what am I even talking about Like, I I just like to chill. Like, literally tomorrow, I'm going with my friend that I haven't seen in so long. But we're going to make phone cases at this, like, cute, kawaii phone case place. And I'm so excited. And then the next day, I am having family Halloween spooky night where I think we're doing crafts and watching movies with my little cousins. I feel like I'm just in a wholesome era of life like wholesome vibes (laughs) like I kind of think I'm not even gonna date right now I think like I'm not focused at all on finding a relationship I really was in the beginning of this year but yeah no not anymore (laughs) but I don't know I used to really like casual dating and like casual situations like that but I don't even know if I want that anymore like I don't know what I want what I want is to buy a house I want to buy a house and get a new car. (laughs) Oh, speaking of that, let me talk about the whole moving thing. Um, Because I made YouTube videos about it and people did ask, what the fuck happened? Are you moving or not? So let me talk about it. Basically, a big part of my depression was kind of like where I lived. 
basically, I rent out the basement of a property that a family member owns, but they don't live here. They live out of state. The rest of the building just has tenants, but I have the basement. And guys, I literally have no windows. It's freezing. I didn't have heat for like the entire winter until I got like a electric fireplace finally. It floods every three months. And I'm not even talking about floods, like water. I'm talking about literal sewage coming up my shower drain. If you can't picture what sewage looks like, I want you to think. When you flush the toilet, what are you flushing? Yeah, that's sewage. So imagine from the whole building, the sewage comes up my shower drain every three months. Yeah, um, you would be depressed too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was really trying to get the fuck out of here. I really was. Also, there's other problems in this apartment that I'm not even going to talk about because they're gross. They're fucking gross. <laughs> the best things about this apartment are the fact that I have a driveway for my car, I have the backyard, and my rent is pretty cheap for New York. But I actually was supposed to move. If you saw my YouTube video, maybe you know the story. I was kind of vague in it because I just didn't want to, like, expose the guy. <laughs> I felt bad about the situation, kind of. But I basically was supposed to move into this really nice apartment that I wanted. It was, like, not too expensive. But they were not approving my application. They kept telling me that it was approved and that I would be able to sign in a few days. And they never were letting me sign the lease. Like... It was like over two weeks of this and I was just like, yo, what the fuck? I felt like they were going to take my deposit. I felt like they were going to scam me. Like I just did not like it anymore. So basically I called after three weeks and was like, okay, um, what's up? Like, can I move? And they were like, oh, we're still making the lease and now he has an attorney. And I'm like, an attorney? Why do you need an attorney? But whatever, I basically withdrew my application and then I got my money back and I was just like, fuck this. Basically, I know I can't get approved here because I'm self-employed and already that makes things 10 times harder. But also, like, I don't have a guarantor. Nobody that I know in my family or anybody makes enough money to afford an apartment in New York. It's insane. And my taxes from last year weren't that great. My taxes from this year definitely should be better. So I hope I can apply to places next year. But at the rate it's going, I'm not going to get accepted anywhere because of me being a freelancer, basically. And to make matters worse, I'm a weed influencer, guys. Like, what if they don't like weed? That's going to make things a million times harder for me. So my plan is I am... Ugh, I hate to say this, but I'm going to stay here until I physically cannot anymore. <laughs> I'm going to just stay here, stack up, try to buy a house eventually. But if before that happens, I'm able to get a nicer apartment, I definitely will probably move. But as of right now, I'm kind of stuck here. Um, yeah, I could move back with my mom and that's definitely a possibility, but I don't know. I haven't lived with her since I'm 18 years old, and that's for a reason. <laughs> I love my mom. I'm going to see her this Sunday. Like, I'm literally, we're cool, we're chill, I'm going to hang out with her. Good vibes. But living together is different. <laughs> I'm very grateful for the fact that I don't need to, like, leave this place, that I could stay in this basement apartment for as long as I want. But... Guys, my like living, my quality of life is not great in this basement. I wish I had windows and I feel so bad for Noki because that Noki's my cat, by the way. Noki used to love sunbathing and I used to have a skylight and I had huge windows in my last apartment. So he would just like bathe in the sun all day long. He loved it. And now we're in this little box, this little box that gets flooded with fucking shit water <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not but yeah that's the update on my living situation i mean i could get a roommate and i could move somewhere with another person which to be honest i was supposed to do that with my ex and 
Um, yeah, <laughs> he, 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 that didn't happen. But um, I could find a roommate and do that. But I do not know anybody who wants to move out of their parents' house. And honestly, that is totally fine. I get it. Like, I literally get it. If I could, I would too. I would stay. If I could have stayed living with my mom for longer than I did, I definitely would have. I just had to move out of that house. It was a very mm, abusive household. We lived with her ex-boyfriend at the time. Like, it just wasn't the vibes for me. So I left. I took matters into my own hands. Um, so yeah, if I was a person who I could do my job, work from home, and also like still live with my parents, I definitely would. Like if I had a good relationship with them and the vibes were good and it was enough space and, you know, somebody had a house maybe, like I would do that, but I don't have that. So it's kind of just me, myself, and I, and I got an end, and let you find out. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, guys, I'm just trying my best. Honestly, I wake up every day and I try my best. And I think that that is the key. I think that knowing what you can tolerate and what you don't tolerate is also key because it's very easy to just say no when you know that you just don't do certain things, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know if you guys have this problem, but I would have this problem where I feel very bad telling somebody no, like when I don't want to go somewhere or when I just don't want to like come to whatever they're inviting me to. I would feel so bad saying no, but there's usually a reason why you want to say no to these things. So it's important to identify those things. And then that's going to go into that list of things you tolerate and don't tolerate. So say like, you don't like going out past 10 p.m. Like you don't like starting the night past 10 p.m. If somebody invites you to something starting at 10 and you feel bad saying no, if you have that boundary in yourself, like I do not go out past 10, it's very easy for you to be like, oh no, I'm sorry, like I can't. It's very easy. Like it's so easy when you have that clear boundary in your head. So make those boundaries with yourself and then it's easier to like communicate, I think. It's kind of hard for me to communicate, I realized, and it's so hard for me to like figure out how to communicate with different types of people, but I think that I'm starting to get better at it simply because my self-esteem is getting better. I think that I had good self-confidence before, like I didn't think I was ugly or something, or I didn't think I was stupid or not funny. I think my job helps me have confidence because it's like oh this is my job to like be me but I think my self-esteem wasn't that good and I realized those are two different things so when I realized that that helped me a lot oh another random thing that my new therapist has been helping me with oh by the way yeah I forgot to say this but after I finished my program my recovery program they connected me with a therapist that I see every Thursday. So yeah, I like her so far. She's cool. She's like younger. I feel like she's a lot closer to my age than most therapists that I have seen. So yeah, I feel like it's a cool perspective. I feel like she gets me. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, she taught me something. She taught me about thinking about things with duality. Like two things can be true at once. So like, for example, with my relationship over the summer, you know, it's easy to see things as bad or see people as bad. But if I look at it with duality of two things can be true, right? I can still say, I think that he tries his best to be a good person, but I don't think he was a great boyfriend. <laughs> I think I could say that. That's duality. Or I could also say that we tried our best to have a good relationship, but at the same time, we both were not happy with ourselves as individuals, so it was hard to be in a relationship. So we were trying our best, but was our best really what we needed at the time? Probably not. I don't know if that makes sense, but like duality, seeing things as two things could be true at once, like... Another example is like, say somebody has a lot of trauma. So, you know, their actions sometimes are mean or rude or something like that because they just had a hard life. But 
two things can be true at once. One thing is that yes, they had a hard life and they have a lot of trauma. But another thing that is true is that you don't need to tolerate them being a bitch or them being an asshole. You know, you can feel compassion for somebody, but you don't need to tolerate them being an asshole, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm getting my point across. So basically, like, one truth is, yes, I feel bad for them that their life sucks and that they went through a lot. Yes, I feel bad. But also, I am not going to allow them to be disrespectful and rude to me, even though it's because of what happened in their life, in their personal experience. Does that make sense? I think it does. But yeah, knowing that there's duality in things actually helped me a lot. I was actually supposed to have like more segments in this podcast, but I've already been recording for over 50 minutes. So um, I think I'm just going to freestyle. I'm just going to freestyle it because that's what I've been doing this whole entire time. I have not been following my notes, but whatever whatever fuck the notes i'm not gonna look at them anymore (laughs) basically i just wanted to let you guys know i am feeling a lot better i'm feeling a lot happier i feel like i have my glow back i feel like myself again i feel like i'm letting myself be happy instead of stressed out all the fucking time like i feel like i'm letting myself chill and i'm really taking care of myself and focusing on myself and my self-care and cleaning my house and making money and taking care of my cat and seeing my friends and my family and maybe just maybe finding a relationship when the time is right (laughs) but mostly my goal is to buy a house one day that's gonna be my motivation for the rest of my life because who knows when it's gonna happen but i'm gonna make it happen (laughs) So yeah, I just want to tell everybody who's going through a hard time. (sighs) Wow. Hard times are hard. Duh. (laughs) Hard times are what breaks us, I feel like. And I feel like having a support system around you to help you get through those hard times is really important. And also realizing that you are so strong and dependent. I mean, independent. (laughs) You are independent and strong and you can do anything on your own, but also there's so much help and resources out there. I think that me really dedicating myself and my time to my mental health and joining a recovery program and even just going to the hospital the first time, like I think all of that pushed me to a headspace of like, oh shit, like I really need to figure out my shit. Also turning 25 was like, oh fuck what the fuck am I doing? Because, you know, ever since I was like 19, I always had this thing in my head, like, I want to have kids by age 27. And now I'm 25, right? And if I want to find a suitable partner and then get married and then have a kid, like, what if I don't do that by age 27? I don't see myself doing that by the next two years, you know? So I felt like this weird pressure. And I was like pressuring myself, kind of. But, you know, I'm just going to go with the flow And honestly, I feel like I'm always like checking in with myself when it comes to mental health. Like I'm kind of like, okay, how are you feeling today? You feeling stressed out? You feeling good? You feeling down? You feeling like that bad feeling is creeping up? Whenever I feel bad feelings creeping up, I really take a step back and reevaluate everything because I am not going to let myself get to that horrible place again. And, you know, I don't want it to be like a scary thing or a thing that I feel shame about like okay if it ever gets that bad again that's life and I will deal with it if that time ever comes but would I love to avoid it hell yeah hell yeah I would love to avoid feeling like shit like what but you know I don't see it as something to be scared of I see it as something to be cautious of though And when I feel little feelings creeping up or say I'm like talking to a guy and they're making me feel small and they're making me feel stressed. I'm like, yo, goodbye. Leave me the fuck alone (laughs) because my health is most important to me. And I just got a lot going on. Like the fact that my mental health triggers my physical health, it's just like a constant cycle and it's not fun at all. I physically feel like shit. So I cannot have somebody's dusty ass son making me feel sick to my stomach. Absolutely not. (laughs) 
but um yeah <laughs> i kind of want to leave you guys with an inspirational message i don't know i'm feeling motivational right now you are hot you are sexy you are pretty you are cool <laughs> you are smart you are silly you are strong and guess what you can do anything that you put your mind to mm -hmm. i know that's right <laughs> basically you can do anything what are you sitting there thinking that you have doubts about yourself are you sitting there thinking that you're not pretty what what are you being your own worst enemy i know you're not because that's not cute <laughs> you're cute so we don't partake in uncute activities we are our biggest fans we love ourselves fully and unconditionally and we forgive ourselves for our past mistakes and we also protect ourselves because we're valuable we are super valuable our time is valuable our energy is valuable and we are some pretty ass smart ass beautiful ass bitches okay and i'm sorry if you're a woman who doesn't like being called a bitch take that out you're beautiful and you're smart and you're a boss and you're silly and cute and all of that take out the bitch part i get it i'm sorry but i'm saying it in an endearing way duh <laughs> side note do you ever hang out with like a new friend and then one of you calls each other like bitch for the first time that is girlhood that is such a healing moment i love it sometimes it just slips out and you guys are both like oh like okay sis i didn't know we were cool like that but whenever that comes out of my mouth i love that person I love that girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, don't let anything break you down. We're here. We're here to have fun. We're here to be silly. We're here to live a life that we enjoy. We're here to live a life that makes us happy. We have to stop settling for things that don't make us happy. And we have to stop thinking we're too small to go for our actual goals. Because I know that we all have these goals that are like so big and these things that we want to do. And we don't do it because we feel like we can't but guess what bitch you can you can i can we can all do it we're gonna heal this shit together and we're gonna support each other through it all you know so yeah find an amazing support system find some friends connect with family connect with yourself and your inner child and get yourself a life that you love because i know you can do it we can all do it okay <laughs> but yeah that is it i have to go because i'm hungry i need to eat some lunch i actually have like this really good croissant waiting for me in the fridge and maybe i'll make like a little croissant sandwich Ooh, fancy <laughs> um but yeah i love you guys thank you so much for listening and i'll talk to you in the next episode bye